Well, good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church this morning. We thank you very much for being here. We do have a lot going on this morning uh, and tonight. We have uh, some missionary guest speakers tonight. We will hear from them uh, at the appropriate time. We have uh, our teens got back safely from uh, the Wilds Youth Camp uh, late last night. Uh, one of the bleary-eyed teens is, is going to be singing uh, in the choir uh, this morning, so uh, she's going to tough that out and do that. But uh, and the bleary-eyed driver was back there making some last-minute changes. That's kind of why I, he he told me to stretch. Just to, okay, he needed a minute or two to finish what he was doing, but I think he's done. So thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. If that's working for you, we are happy to provide that for you. Uh, but let's stand this morning and start with "There's a new song in my heart." continue to sing this morning. song this morning just about listening for the Lord's <clears throat> guidance for where he would like you to be. Take my life and let it be. Yeah. 
here today. We, uh, I'll get to the visitors in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to come down off the mountain right now, all right? So be patient with me, if you would, please. We had a great week at camp. I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But let's do this. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, good morning, and we do thank you. Thank you for our blessed week at camp. God, we enjoyed ourselves, but also so many things were, were uh, settled and, and uh, decisions made. And now, Lord, as we come today to gather, may we continue to keep our eyes upon you. And may we continue to, as the songs have said, to follow on and, and to take my life and let it be. God, may we take to heart those thoughts. And Lord, we're looking forward to hearing from some of our missionaries and what you've been doing in their lives. And Lord, may we listen with open hearts and open ears. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Pastor's going to come a little bit later on and tell us a little bit about some folks that we need to pray for. So you'll be listening to that. But if this is your very first time or the first time in a really long time here at First Baptist Church, would you do us a favor? Would you raise your hand high above your head like I have mine? We would like to have a record of you being here with us today. There we go. we got some right here. And if you would, we have a card they're going to hand you. You see it on the screen. There's a QR code on that code. If you would scan that or if you cannot scan a QR code, turn on the back and fill it out. What we will do is we will be in contact with you via email. And we would like to donate $10 in your honor to a local charity. And so if you would do that for us, we would appreciate that so much. Our way of saying thank you for being here and giving back to our community. Well, yes, we spent a week at camp. I don't have time to go into all this stuff, but let me tell you, number one, I got so many compliments on our teenagers. And I've been around the youth uh, ministry a long time to know when they're just blowing fluff or if they're being serious, they were being serious. They were very complimentary of our teenagers. They were active, and not only that, they were complimentary of just how considerate they were and everything else. And some of the parents are going, is that the same teen I sent with you? Yes, it was. I promise. It was. So we had a great time a week. We had one accept Christ as their Savior. We had another one reassure themselves of their salvation. Another one that said he would just wanted to live his life better for Christ. And the many individual decisions that were made amongst our teenagers. I got to spend some time with each and every one of them. And uh, I am very excited about what God is doing in our teen group. Uh, and and, and as, as excited as they were about camp, they were wore out when they got home. But before we left camp, they wanted to make a short video to tell you something. So if you would, go ahead, Josh. Thank, Thank you for coming for supporting us. us. <laughs> Took me three takes to get that one. I'll tell you the story behind it later. They're very grateful for everyone who supported them financially or through helps. The Parmelees are here today, and we're so grateful they went with us, and uh, we're a big, big, big help. So we don't have much more time, so I'm going to get out of the way, and we're going to allow Pastor come and tell us about the missionaries. Last year, First Baptist Church sponsored a mission conference at the Avon Park Correctional Institute. It went really well. So we sponsored another one this year, and it was this past Friday and Saturday. And we have two missionaries with us today, today who came down for that missions conference. John Yingling, is first of all, he is the president of Baptist International Outreach. And he was a missionary in American Samoa years ago. And then Terry Childers, who is the general director of Baptist... <laughs> Now, here's the joke. Terry has a ministry that's called Smart Training. And if you're old enough, you remember Get Smart? When we have our meetings, every time Terry is announced, I will sing. Dun, 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 dun. I thought we might as well have some fun with it. We were going to do it tonight, but we got you this morning, too. So tonight, when we introduce Terry, who will be speaking tonight, we'll play the Get Smart, and it'll just get him warmed up. Terry, come on up. He has a really interesting ministry. SMART has, is an acronym, and what this man is doing 
is trying to create durable missionaries. That's the word you're using, yep. isn't it? You're going to give him five minutes to tell us what he does through bio. Come on up. Terry Childers. By the way, he was a missionary in Nairobi, Kenya for 22 years. Yep. Right yep. now, I'm trying to regain my focus. Uh, <laughs> not from Nairobi, but from what just happened here. <laughs> okay, a question for First Baptist Church. Why would you support a church planting missionary? And that's kind of a rhetorical question. But the answer to that would be because you want to see a church planted in a foreign field, in another city. And uh, I would call that a mission accomplished. But when a church planter leaves the field prematurely, and they come back to the States, they leave behind an unaccomplished mission. And generally, the statistic that most of us in missions accept about missionary attrition is that of all the missionaries who come through on deputation, of course, not all of them will make it to the field. But of those who finally make it to the field, 50% of them will not return there for a second term of service. That results in a lot of unaccomplished missions. They leave the field prematurely for a variety of reasons. There are a lot of security threats. There are bouts with recurring illnesses and tropical diseases, many of which are preventable. They run into problems of maintaining vehicles and equipment and other things which we as Americans are typically very dependent on. And uh, during those 22 years that my wife and I spent in East Africa, we saw that generally that is true. We saw a lot of good people come, and unfortunately we saw a lot of good people leave prematurely. And they didn't, get in, they didn't fall into sin, they didn't get mixed up in false doctrine, they didn't, they didn't uh, lose their financial support and all of that. They, just, they got worn out by that daily grind of life uh, in a third world country. Well, in 2010, the Lord uh, moved us, my wife and I, back to the States uh, where we were going to serve in the offices up at Baptist International Outreach. And uh, the Lord laid on our heart that his next mission for us was to, to develop this smart ministry, this specialized missionary and resource training uh, ministry. And I have some I have some brochures here. I'm going to lay them down here on the communion table. Uh, if you'd like to come by afterwards and, and pick up one, you can pray for us. Uh, we don't have all of the answers. But uh, part of what we do, though, is to identify areas where missionaries uh, struggle with uh, the dynamics of missions and uh, things that interfere with their longevity of staying on the field. And then we try to develop uh, specialized courses uh, to help train them. And one of the unique things about uh, what, how we're doing this is that it is missionaries uh, like myself, Brother John, who has served on a foreign field, and, and other missionaries that uh, we uh, collaborate with who uh, we put our heads together. We, we find out, okay, how did, how did this happen with the missionary and what would be uh, some of the viable answers? And uh, when we identify some of those areas, then we work on developing a training module uh, for that. And uh, just, uh, we don't have an exhaustive uh, curriculum. We have about eight or nine different training classes at this point. Uh, there again, you could pray the Lord would give us wisdom uh, developing other training modules. But we have, a, we have a course on basic vehicle repair, one on leadership development, one on uh, <clears throat> uh, personal protection matters. Uh, and uh, that, that uh, class on personal protection matters, we have actually taught that not just to missionaries, but we have gone to churches uh, where they were going to have a missions trip and uh, gave them some uh, personal protection training. It's not Kung Fu or martial arts. It's, it's stuff for their head to help them be a smart traveler. And so um, you can pray for us that uh, the Lord would help us to be effective in what we do and uh, that the Lord would use this to build those durable missionaries so they can keep on going for the Lord. Thank you. And the brochures are right down here.
You'll often hear me talk about Baptist International Outreach. I serve with this group, and these men are my friends. We serve together, and uh, I can vouch for both of them. They are good men who love the Lord, and Baptist International Outreach is a very good ministry, very good uh, it's a missionary clearinghouse, basically, for missionaries and a supporter of churches. Choir's going to sing now, Jesus is my Lord. time use this for prayer requests and we've got a few. Beckett Beasley is about four years old I think. He and his family were over at one of the theme parks in Orlando yesterday and he fainted and they couldn't get him to come back to consciousness and he is right now at the St. Joseph's Children's Hospital. He is conscious back but they think he might have a heart problem and so please pray for Beckett. Phil Wilson is in South Shore Hospital. It used to be South Bay he is doing better today. Uh, Bob Durier is in South Shore Hospital. He had cellulitis in an ankle, and he's been in a lot of pain. He's doing better. Uh, Paul Hargett, who is one of our JI kids, is at Brandon Regional Hospital. He is in ICU. His mother and sister have not been able to get in to see him since around Thursday. Received a call from his physician on Friday and said, you need to pray for Paul. And that's all he told them. And so when they called me, they were understandably upset. Uh, we've been unable to get much information at all. Did get permission late last evening that I can go up and visit him. They're not going to tell me anything about him, but at least uh, maybe I'll see him. He has been unconscious for a while. And so exactly what the problem is, we don't know. And then Roger Ackley has been in the hospital this week, as uh, Linda Parmley has been in the hospital this week. Uh, let's see, we need to pray for Jenny uh, 
Mozart from Lone. Jenny McGrath, she's going to have a procedure done on Wednesday. And then a friend of Jim Farr's named Steve Brady. He is a, one of the assistants at First Baptist Church in uh, Gibsonton. He has a son named Joey. Joey and his family live up in Georgia. They had a house fire. Their house was burned. He has uh, three children. A two-year-old son perished in that fire. And Mama tried to go back in to save that little boy, and she was very badly burned. Their last name is Brady, and please pray for the Brady family. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this offering. We pray that it be sufficient to meet the needs that we have here at this church and the needs of our missionaries. We pray especially for the Brady family with this horrible loss, not of the property, but of the life and of the danger and the burns to the mother. And closer to home, Lord, we pray for Beckett Beasley and his parents, for Roger, for Phil Wilson, for Bob Durier, for Paul Hargett, Linda Parmalee. And we pray for, for Jenny. We pray that the procedure would go well this Wednesday. Lord, we just ask that we would be able to see the evidence of your work in the lives of these people. In Christ's name, amen.
and shame And I know what it's like To really hurt someone And feel no sense of sorrow At their pain But I know what it's like to have enough of my disgrace and find because of Jesus' love my sin has been erased. He has forgiven me. My sin Richard Vick started Baptist International Outreach years ago. When the name was changed to Baptist International Outreach, Richard became the first president of it. There was a man named Garvin Dykes who became the general director. And when Brother Vick retired, Garvin became the second president of BIO and John Yingling became the general director. 
Garvin Dykes has now passed away, and John is now the president of Baptist International Outreach, and Terry's the general director. You ever pray for this man? Because if something happens to him, you know you're next. That's the way it's working, isn't it? John was a missionary to American Samoa, and was there at the same time that Jeff Price was. Jeff Price, you may remember, called himself Big Daddy, and he is big. They were at the same time there in American Samoa, and John has informed me that he didn't leave because he had to. He left because they literally worked themselves out of a job and started a church in American Samoa's pretty small place, and they had two active churches going there. And so he came back and joined Baptist International Outreach around 1999, is it? 2001, about the time I came here. John Ying is a friend of mine, and he's doing a good job at Baptist International Outreach, and he also is kind of on fire and up because of yesterday's missions conference. Brother John, come on up. God bless you. I love your pastor. He's a good friend, and I thank the Lord for him and his influence and, and uh, friendship and counsel in my life. And as pastor was saying, my heart is full. Uh, my, my heart is full for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, as, as pastor mentioned, and I'll share a little bit tonight about how it went. So come back, if you will, tonight. And I'll share what God is doing over there, at least this last couple days at Avon Park. My heart is also full to be with you here this morning. Um, you have been a friend to Bio for as long as I know, 21 years. And before that, um, with Brother Rumsey's relationship with Bio. And, and that, what that means practically is literally First Baptist Church has given thousands of dollars to meet office needs and to participate in projects. And literally, you all are yoke fellows. You are partners in the ministry with us. And so it, with, with great excitement, I, I wanted to come up here and share my appreciation to you for your faithfulness to God and missions, for your faithfulness to God and being faithful here at First Baptist and being a friend to Bio. And not only being a friend to Bio, but also being a friend to me and my family. You all have supported me and my family as missionaries in our own right for at least a decade. And I want to thank you personally for your faithfulness. Uh, many of you have come up to me and asked me how Amber is doing. Amber Yingling, your missionary to the Philippines, is my daughter. And you all have taken her on for support as well now. And I'm here to also encourage you and to let you know that Amber is doing well. As can be expected, as a young single lady in a foreign country, she's homesick and she's struggling with the culture. But as her father, I'm watching God turn her into, make her into a lady of God. God is making her like Jesus, and she is a fantastic servant of God there in the Philippines, God is going to use her as, and he is using her now as she's learning the language and the culture and adapting to, to the situation where she's at now. Um, so I want to just thank you and, and tell you how much I appreciate you all and, uh, and your partnership with us in the ministry. My heart is also full, Brother Rumsey, because I didn't realize that Brother Jim was not speaking in his class this morning. We had a special speaker. I thought this man passed away, but Dr. Adrian Rogers was our Sunday school teacher this morning. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm like, wait a minute. That is Dr. Rogers. Even the mannerisms, Brother Green. I really enjoyed your class. Thank you for that. I do have a message on my heart, and I would like for you to turn to two places, if you would. If you turn to Psalm 96 and verse 3. Psalm 96 and verse 3. And I'd also like you to turn to Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. And my message this morning is going to come from these two passages of Scripture. Psalm 96 and verse 3. But I'll begin reading at the beginning of the psalm and then stop after verse 3 or verse 4. I'll read through verse 4. If you'd like to, if you're with me, I don't normally do this, but if you'd stand with me for these four verses. Psalm 96 and verse 1, it says, 
Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. We did that just now. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. And notice verse 3. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. And what's the motivation for that? Why do we do that? For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Let's pray. Father, we have sung this morning and we praise you for your faithfulness, for your wonder. There is only one God and there is none beside you, none else. I pray, Father, that you would touch our hearts this morning and minister to us through the preaching of your word. My heart is, as I've mentioned, is already overflowing. And I just pray, Lord, that once again you'd meet with us this morning and that you'd speak to us and you'd make us a little bit more like Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Now if you would turn over to Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. And I'm going to begin by reading and uh, speaking about a story that perhaps many of us in this room are familiar with. Uh, we're very familiar with the man Joseph and with Pharaoh at the time when Joseph was in prison. That's where we find ourselves here in the Word of God. Joseph is in prison and Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt, really the leader of the known world, is having an encounter with God. It says in verse 1 of chapter 41, And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed... And behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, or cows, and fat-fleshed. And they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean flesh, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored kine... And the lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. Have you ever had a crazy dream? I don't dream very much, but sometimes I dream, and it's usually after too much pizza late at night or ice cream or something like that. I dreamed last week. Exactly a week ago, I drove down to Pensacola with a rental car, and I helped my daughter and son-in-law and my uh, granddaughter, and we packed up all of their belongings from Pensacola, and we moved them up to Tennessee for three months. Uh, my son-in-law is going to have an internship there at Faith Baptist Church for three months. And so I drove all the way down to Pensacola, helped pack a truck in the hot sun for eight hours, and then drove the truck all the way back up to East Tennessee. And as soon as we got back, we had training school. And we're, we're busy all week long at the bio office with training school. And then training school ends, and I'm anticipating going here to, to uh, Tampa and the, and the conference and, and uh, Avon Park. And I dreamed. <laughs> I dreamed that I was driving, and I fell asleep, and I drove off the road, and there was a hill in the median and I drove up into the air and all of a sudden my car is flying around and I'm driving. Now that's a crazy dream. <laughs> but that's not as crazy as Pharaoh's dream. It was so crazy that he woke up. He's like, what in the world? And he went back to sleep. Verse 5, it says, And he slept and dreamed the second time and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke. And behold, it was a dream. Pharaoh woke up and it wasn't just a crazy dream. See... God had not given the word of God yet. 
And when God spoke to man during this time in scriptures, often God would speak in dreams. So not only did Pharaoh experience these two dreams, but he also experienced the conviction and the weight of the Spirit of God. He knew that this was more than just too much pizza. So what did he do? In verse 8, it says, And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all of the magicians of Egypt and all of the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. And follow closely with me in verse 8. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. If we jump over to verse 20, 24, we see where he's telling the story again to Joseph. But the last part of verse 24, he says it like this. But there was none that could declare it unto me. We just read in Psalms that it's God's will that the whole world, that all people behold the glory of God. And it's our job as God's people to declare the glory of God. But here with Pharaoh... There was no one to declare. There was no one to interpret the word of God for him. God in his sovereignty and God in his mercy was speaking to Pharaoh because God knew that there was a great famine coming to Egypt and to the world. And God in his mercy and God in his sovereignty was reaching down to, to intercede and to work his will through all circumstances. And that's what God does today. When we were in the prison yesterday, I was speaking to the prisoners and I told them that, you know, the state of Florida might have put you here at Avon Park, but you need to think beyond that. God put you here at Avon Park. God is sovereign and God is above everything. And God in his mercy and God in his sovereignty, his wisdom, was speaking directly to Pharaoh. But there was no one that could interpret the word of God. There was no one that could declare the word of God. Why is that? Well, that was because of two reasons. Number one, because spiritual truths can only be discerned by the Spirit of God. Spiritual truths can only be discerned by the Spirit of God. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned when Adam and Eve were in the garden God created them perfect they walked and talked with God in the cool of the day and God told them remember do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they disobeyed God Eve was deceived and Adam chose to disobey God and when they died what God told them would happen happened they died immediately. Yes, they could still walk and talk and breathe, but they died immediately. In Bible college, we used to argue back and forth, Brother Barry. Are you a trichotomist or a dichotomist? Well, one guy would argue, I'm a, I'm a dichotomist, meaning that man is body and soul, no more. And then another roommate would say, no, we're a, tri we're a trichotomy. There's body, soul, and spirit. Well, the answer is yes, they're both right. When God created us in his image, we were body, soul, and spirit. But when Adam and Eve sinned, the spirit died. Every man that's born today is only two parts, body and soul. 
because we have inherited Adam's sin nature. If you're here today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're only body and soul. And there is no way that you can understand the Word of God because the Word of God is spiritually discerned. Pharaoh could not understand the Word of God because the Word of God was spiritually discerned. There's another reason why he could not understand. And that is because there was no spirit-filled person that could declare it unto him. There was no spirit-filled person that could declare it unto him. Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? There was no prophet. There was no preacher that could tell Pharaoh we see in verse 8 that he called the psychologists and he called the counselors and he called the diviners. He called everyone he could and no one could give him answers. People today in this world, they call their physicians, they call their counselors, their therapists, they call their psychologists, they call their friends. Some seek the stars and astrology and the signs of the zodiac, but none of those give answers. They need a man of God or a woman of God. Today in this world there is a famine and there is judgment to come much like in our passage of scripture. And in many people's lives around this world, there is no one to declare unto them the word of God. None to declare. I'm a president of a missions board, and you knew that missions was going to come out of here somewhere, right? How many have ever heard of the 1040 window? 10 degrees north from North Africa, the west part of North Africa, to 40 degrees north Take that swath all the way across to the other side of China. In that rectangle, there are over 6,000 unreached people groups, which total 3.27 billion people, 42% of the world's population that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. And the reason for that is, just like Pharaoh, there is none to declare. There is no one there to declare. Aren't you glad that's not the end of the story? This world is dead spiritually. This world needs to understand the word of God by someone who is spirit-filled and can preach and interpret the word of God to them. Thank the Lord that in our story, there was one that could declare it. There was one to declare it. Look with me, beginning in verse number 9 of chapter 41. It says, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servant, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dream. So each, to each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored into my office. And him he hanged. The butler spoke up. The butler had had the experience of hearing from God and having Joseph there in the prison to declare it unto him. And the chief butler woke up. And he said, oh, oh yeah, I remember. There was this Hebrew. You remember the story of Joseph, how that he was his father's favorite son and he wore that 
Technicolor green, dream coat. I just dated myself, I think. His brothers despised him. Do you remember? They took him and they stripped him of his coat and they threw him in a pit. They wanted to kill him and then they traded him to the Midianites and he was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Do you remember that? He went to Potiphar's. He was sold to Potiphar and Potiphar had him and then he was falsely accused and thrown in dungeon and there he sat in prison in the dungeon. I wonder what was going through Joseph's mind when he was enduring all that. Remember, there was no word of God as we have it. The only word of God he had was what was passed down to him from his father and the dreams that God gave him. Do you remember the dreams he had? His sheaves was in the middle and then all the other sheaves were around him, 11 of them, and they bowed down to him. Remember, he told his brothers and they hated him the more. And then the sun and the stars... And the moon bowed down to him. And they hated it even more. Remember that? He, they hated him even more. But I wonder how those dreams must have played in his heart and mind with the conviction of the Holy Spirit as he was being put through all those circumstances. I think we understand that in Psalm 105. Turn with me to Psalm 105. And we see perhaps what was going on and the heart and life of Joseph all this time. In Psalm 105, beginning in verse 16, it says, Moreover, he, God, called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. In verse 17, it says, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. I don't know what was going through Joseph's heart and mind for sure, but I know what God was doing because the Holy Spirit of God gives it to us in Psalm 105. The word of God was trying Joseph. God was taking the word of God and God was turning Joseph into Jesus. Have you ever done a study to see the likeness, the type that Joseph is of Christ? There's a long list of similarities between Joseph and between Jesus Christ. Joseph is a wonderful, beautiful type of Christ all the way through his life. God was doing something in his heart. God was building the man and making him like Jesus. We had prayer meeting at 7.30 this morning and we prayed for needs. This morning when Pastor prayed for the offering, he prayed for needs. In the Sunday school class we were in, we prayed for needs. And oftentimes we, we get caught up in the physical requests. And they're serious. And we have compassion. And we should care. But do we ever ask ourselves, what is God doing in this situation? God is sovereign. God understands the need. God created us. He knows our frame. What, what is the purpose of God? What is God trying to do in each and every one of the requests that we bring before him? What is God doing in your heart and in my heart? Perhaps you're here this morning and you're buried in debt and you're thinking, Oh my goodness, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to have to file bankruptcy. Did you ever think about perhaps what God's purpose is in that? Maybe this morning you're struggling with health needs. Here, you've come to church, but you're struggling with health needs. I remember not too long ago, Brother Barry, I was 40 years old, and I ate too much turkey on Thanksgiving, so I hopped on my treadmill and I ran eight miles on the treadmill. 
Last night I got up, about, it was about 5 o'clock this morning, I got up, and I went down those, how many, five stairs? I could barely go down them because there's no rail on the wall. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> health. Maybe you're struggling with health, with your health. You have physical needs. Do you ever think that maybe God has a purpose in this for you? I wonder what Joseph thought as he sat there in the prison day after day as he tried to sleep at night. I wonder where his mind went as the word of God tried him, as God was making him a man of God, as God was making him like Jesus. I wonder what was going through his mind. God knew what he was doing. Have you ever lost a loved one and your heart is absolutely shattered and broke? What is God doing? Sometimes we get so focused on the needs before us that we forget all about the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is this. There's a dying world out here. And they need someone filled with the Spirit of God that can declare unto them the Word of God. And it could just be that God is working in your heart and in other hearts so that they might be the one to declare the Word of God to somebody else in the same situation. Joseph was there. Joseph could declare the word of God. God had prepared Joseph for that exact time. Let's continue reading in the story. In verse number 14, it says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Notice how Hastily this came about. There's an urgency to getting the word of God out to a lost and dying world. An urgency. Imagine as we broke up here this morning and we were on our way home for our Sunday afternoon meal and nap. And we look over to our right and there's a house that's bursted into flames. There's no emergency equipment there. You're the first one to see it. I believe in my heart that every one of us in this room would have the same response. We would immediately run down, drive down there, run down there. We'd call the, the emergency department. We, we would do everything we could to make sure that we could help anyone in that house that's struggling with the flames. Would we not? If we had plans for Sunday afternoon nap or Sunday afternoon dinner, or if we had plans to go to the, a restaurant or someone's house, immediately those, those plans would change, would they not? Why? Because there's an emergency. There's a crisis. There's something that needs to be taken care of. And is not the, the lost and dying souls around us here in Ruskin an emergency, souls that are on their way to a Christless eternity forever are not those in the 1040 window, the 3.27 billion that have never heard the word of God, is that not an emergency? Should that, should that not alter our plans and our life in some way throughout our day? I thank God for the missionaries that he has called. In Bolivia, Matt and Melody Parrish, a parrot, I'm sorry, Matt and Melody Parrot are there to declare the word of God. Jeff and Sandra Price are there to declare the word of God. And you're partnering there with them. In the Dominican, Jason and Sarah Sykes are there to declare the word of God. I praise God that they're there. And you are there with them. In Ethiopia, Burhanu and Wubit, Travis and Mimi, Gomaja, they're there declaring the word of God to a lost and dying world. And you are there with them. 
Joel Desir, what a, an amazing gift that God has given that man. What a, what a preacher. I'm telling you what, I can't wait to tell you. You have to come back tonight to hear about it. But Brother Joel just connected with those guys. You're a part of that ministry. And Brother Joel was there at Avon Park. And Brother Joel is in Haiti to declare the word of God. I thank God for that. For Knapp and Shirley Donato and my daughter Amber in the Philippines. Praise God that they're there to declare the word of God. Chris Radabaugh and Lucinda in the Philippines. I mean in, in South Africa. Johannes and, and, and Kittist and Justin and Danielle Souter in Zambia. They're there preaching and teaching the word of God. And you're there with them. Brother David and Stephanie Peach. Brother David Peach right now is in on the other side of the United States, in Arizona, I believe, for a deaf expo, where he's going to have opportunity all week to preach the word of God to the deaf. Praise God that, there, that these missionaries are there to declare the word of God to the lost because of your partnership with them. But my question for you this morning is this. Who are you declaring the word of God to? Do you think that the people that we cross paths with throughout the day, do you think that our neighbors that God has given to us, do you think our co-laborers, our fellow workers, co-workers, do you think all of those people in our lives is just there by random chance? Or perhaps do you think that God has prepared you to be the one to declare the word of God to them. What are you struggling with in your heart and your life right now? What is God doing? How is the word of God trying you? How is God preparing you? The purpose is to make you like Christ. The purpose is so that you can declare the word of God to those who cannot ever possibly understand it without the illumination of the Holy Spirit, who could never possibly understand it without someone there to preach to them the word of God. What is God doing in your heart? Who, who are the lost around you? God is working. If you're still here, you're here for twofold purpose. You're here to become like Jesus Christ, and you're here to reflect his image and his glory to those who he has crossed your path. I'm going to wrap it up, but I want you to see how this worked out practically. Turn with me over to uh, Acts chapter 8. Keep your finger here. Turn over with me to Acts chapter 8. Do you remember the story of, of, the, of Philip when he was preaching the revival in Samaria and how the Holy Spirit moved him from that revival and took him to the wilderness. And you're thinking to yourself, why in the world would the Holy Spirit move him away from a, a, a booming revival and, and tell him to go to the wilderness in the middle of nowhere? And you remember that one individual was there, that Ethiopian that, that worked for Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. He was there. And, and look what happened in, in Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 27. It says, and he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Look how the Ethiopian answered him in verse 31. And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. I wonder how many people in our lives would desire that we come up and sit with them and share with them the word of God. 
In verse 32 it says, In the place of the scriptures which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? And I love this next verse, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Thank God there was one to declare the glory of God to this Ethiopian eunuch. Verse 36 says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What is God doing in your life? Who are the people in your life, family, friends, co-workers, acquaintances? How is the word of God preparing you for someone that needs to hear the word of God? Maybe there's someone on your heart and mind right now. There's no way they could understand the word of God. It's spiritually discerned. They need the Holy Spirit to open their eyes. They need the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. They need the Holy Spirit to give them repentance. And God is preparing you to preach the gospel, to declare unto them the word of God. Maybe there's someone here this morning. If you're lost without Christ, you're lost in your sin. Sin was passed to us from our federal head, Adam. Everyone that's born, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're here without Christ, then you're in danger of the judgment and the wrath of Almighty God. But Jesus Christ came and died and paid for your sins. If you're here this morning and you need Christ, I beg of you to come and receive Christ as your Savior. But those of us who are believers, let's turn back to Psalm 96. And read verse 3 again. Psalm 96 and verse 3, declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Let's put everything in our heart and our life into this perspective. What is God doing? What is God preparing you to do? Who has God put in your heart and your life? Let's stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. In a moment, we're going to have a time where we can do business with God. I'm going to ask Pastor Rumsey to come. And, but just think about that. There, there is no accident in your life. The circumstances in your life, they might be consequences of your choices. That's true. But God is sovereign, and God is working all things for his glory. What is God doing in your heart and mind? How and for who is God preparing you to declare the glory of God? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the scriptures. I pray that you would minister to our hearts and that you would have your perfect will and way. In Jesus' name I pray. Pastor Rumsey. While you're standing, Brother Robert's going to sing for us one verse. We'll join him on the second. This will be a time to spend some time in prayer and ask God to speak to your heart as he sings. Robert. Have thine own way, Lord. 
And God has spoken to you. Now is the time to come. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting. As the invitation continues. Just join and sing with Robert. Words will be on the screen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow. me just now, as in thy presence. We'll sing one more verse before we close. I Third verse. at 5 o'clock, Brother Childers is going to be preaching and Brother Yingling is going to give us a story about what took place at the Avon Park Correctional Institute on Friday and Saturday. 4 o'clock, our choir practices. I mentioned folks who've been in the hospital this week to have you pray for them. Another one was in the hospital, Bonnie Browder, who teaches K-5 at Russian Christian School, was in the hospital earlier this week and I just left her off my list. But I got her on now. Phil Green, come on up here. For those that don't know what Dr. Adrian Rogers sounded like, if you close your eyes, you'll hear him through Phil Green. <laughs> Join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this time uh, this morning, Lord. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to come to your house to listen to your word. Uh, and uh, we pray, Lord, that we will take this message to heart, Lord, that we will uh, go out from here, that we will be uh, witnesses and uh, uh, spirit-filled uh, uh, Christians that will bring a message to a uh, spiritually dead world. Go with us as we go now to our uh, back to our homes. Bring us together tonight as we once again uh, gather to worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>